Conversations Podcast, episode 16. Super, super excited. Uh, today, uh, my guests are the Tetranauts. We have uh, Eric Gaither, Reed Smith, uh, and then Mr. Dylan Tobin of the Tetranauts. Their new, uh, their new single, Third Encounter, just dropped. You can check it out on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, you know, anywhere you uh, listen to your tunes. Uh, guys, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having us, John. Absolutely. This is uh this is my first four person podcast, so it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. So I'm excited that you guys are the uh, the test run for it. So I was happy you could all be here. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I want I I was telling I sent uh, Gaither a text message, um, but my daughter she's 18 months old and she loves your stuff. So I put it on. I'll have to send the video to you guys in the group message we have going on. But she just. I mean, if you put a glow stick in her hand, it looked like she was, you know, and she was just going back and forth, just having the time of her life. But uh, it's super, super catchy, um, just like really experimental. It's something that, uh, you know, t- I'll be honest, typically I have a hard time in like the electronic music area, but you guys, I think, really, really stand out. And it may be because, you know, your history of, of I know, you know, Eric, you're a musician, play guitar, you know, all sorts of a piano, all sorts of things. Dylan, I know you're a musician as well. So, I mean, I don't know if maybe I like lean into a little bit more because the there's like actual musicianship behind it as well. Not to say that, you know, the electronic music isn't musicianship, but I think it's, it just I, maybe resonates a little bit more with me. Um, you know, talk to me a little bit about uh, you know, talk to me a little bit about how you guys met, right? Because from what I understand, I know, you know, Gaither, we, we grew up together and, and Dylan, we went to high school together. This is my first time meeting Reed, which I'm very excited about, but, you know, kind of talk to me about how the Tetranauts left the ground. Sure. Um, I can, uh, yeah, let me start for a second, just because I think before Tetranauts, uh, it's important to know that like Reed, Reed and I started writing music together. Uh, at John, after Robots in the Garden kind of split up and I, I moved up to Lansing, um, it wasn't within a matter of months that I, I met Reed. And when he found out that I was a musician, we instantly started like sharing music and stuff. And at the time, I didn't really listen to any electronic music at all. Uh, for the most part, you know, as you know, I was listening to, you know, punk rock bands and, and maybe some screamo and metal and stuff and experimental. But I never really... Uh, gotten into the electronic scene until I met Reed. And when I met him, he had f- like freshly got back from 2011 Electric Forest and he was like <laughs> bouncing on all cylinders, like wanting to be the world's best DJ. And I and, like, it was like this energy that I had never felt before. And uh, when Reed found out that I wrote music and that I had some experimentation with, uh, with recording music and things like that instantly, he was like, Oh, we got, we got to start writing music. We got to start making electronic music. And uh, you missed this we just we went into it we just went in one day and i and it was funny because i didn't have a computer we were both so broke um i didn't have a computer reed had to use his roommate's computer and we downloaded logic on it and at the time i worked for apple so i just got it for free so it was like we got logic and started writing music um but we had no idea what we were doing and where we were going with it and we started a project called the bass choir the two of us and it was it was kind of slow starting. We didn't really know what we were doing and what we were getting into, but we knew we wanted to make music and we just kind of went with it. So that's kind of how, sorry, Reed, from your perspective, what was it like, uh, you know, starting the bass choir and all that, like you're taking us back. Yeah. Like, so I had always kind of been into DJing around the time I met Eric. I also like downloaded an app on my phone that was a DJ controller and yeah. literally started playing some house parties around the city that just like plugged into an aux cable to my phone like behind a table, little teeny thing, was just playing, playing, playing. And uh, just learned, finally bought my first $200 controller, then upgraded to a $1,000 controller. Um, and now we're playing on, you know, like $5,000 of equipment. And it's just progressed from, you know, this kind of experimenting with different sounds and really, like Eric said, not knowing what we were doing, but kind of like diving headfirst into this unknown abyss, abyss that we kind of maybe, I feel like, no, 18% of now you know what I mean after six years seven years um but like Eric and I kind of had a connection started playing shows and kind of got like a little bit of a brand going but then Eric uh got into U of M and so Eric like went to U of M and I ended up moving out west so I like went out to Denver and did like Denver and Phoenix before I moved back to Michigan 
And when all this was happening, we actually met Dylan. Right, yes, yeah, so um, from, like from 2012 to 2014, Reed and I were writing music as the bass choir. And then I moved back to Canton area and started going to U of M Dearborn and Reed moved out west, like he was mentioning. And I, we still were like bouncing ideas back and forth, you know, with the internet, just kind of going back and forth. And then I would go and visit Dylan, who I've known since I was in about ninth grade. And uh, he had just started really getting into music production as well. And we were like, you know what? Let's try doing like some, some collaboration and things like that instead of just the two piece and start putting out music that way instead. So that's when Dylan came to the mix. I remember I flew back to Michigan one time and like Dylan picked me up from the airport and we drove an hour north of Detroit to like his house in the country and wrote music for like maybe eight hours and the next night everyone came over and we were back at 7 a.m. the next morning to Phoenix. And I think we kind of, after that, it was like, boom, we had these ideas and we did a David Bowie remix and then it kind of just all kept rolling. Yeah, I will say I love uh, the, the remixes you've done too. I wanted to talk a little bit about that, but the, uh, the I know the Gaither, you did the uh, the Tiger King Carol Baskin remix and I was going around showing that to everybody. It just blew my mind. Was uh, so <laughs> What's funny about that remix too is that um, Dylan's dying right now because I have to say it. But I like I just watched Tiger King and like Allie and I had binged all the way through it. And I was like, I got to write a Tiger King remix. So I just took that track and then I did uh, what's called a VIP where you take a section of it and ultimately it becomes the build and then into a drop that is a brand new drop. So I did that with uh, with the Tiger King track and I sent it over to Reed and Dylan and they hated it like instantly. They were like, <laughs> no, definitely not a Touch Nuts track. Like we can't release this. And I was like, well, screw you guys. I want to just put it out <laughs> on my SoundCloud. And so I did. It happens sometimes. It does happen. And what was funny is because then it's because I found out that they hadn't watched Tiger King, so they didn't really get like the like the I don't know the nuance of it or whatever it was until like weeks later. Dylan's like, "Oh, I'm watching Tiger King, and it's hilarious." <laughs> I did end up like, <laughs> yeah, he did end up liking it, which is good. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things. I I will say it. I mean, uh, like. Tiger King is, is definitely one of those things where if you don't watch it, you don't, I don't think you understand why people are so into it. And then as soon as you like Kara and I put it on in the, like after the first episode, we're like, it can't get any crazier than that. And they were like, yeah. fuck you. This is Tiger King. See yeah. <laughs> episode two. And it, it just every episode just got like more and more and more and more insane. So what, when you dropped that, I was literally, I was sending it, I was sending the link over to my friends. I was like, dude, check this out. This is my buddy from Michigan. You have to, you have to check this out. It's so good. So funny. It's awesome. Well, yeah, Dylan, I wanted to ask you, because you're being, you're being, uh, I haven't got to hear, hear from you much. So from your perspective, right, talk to me a little bit about um, what it was like for you linking up with these guys musically and, and, you know, how you felt kind of coming into the mix. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, even going back to Robots in the Garden, I was hanging out with you guys. I, like, that was probably my first real introduction to do that, like, that did it for me. As soon as I had that experience, I was like, this is just absolutely fucking amazing. I need to do more of this. I need to be a part of more of this. Um, and just overall, it was a great time. You guys were a lot of fun to hang out with. So that was just a good time. Um, I would say like 2012 is, sticks out to me a lot. Um, I went to Central Michigan and I used to come down and uh, party with these guys at East Lansing and we would go to like neighborhood underground basement parties and you would hear this like dubstep blaring from upstairs and you'd be like at first like what the fuck is that like i've never heard <laughs> shit like this and like i like skrillex is just getting popular at this time or, or whatever i'm starting to hear it more it's going more mainstream and so we're all partying and stuff like that so i guess like that's kind of my first real introduction of being around these guys in electronic music at the same time um then I would say 2014 went to Forest with these fellas, and, and that sealed the deal for me as well. Um, like you, John, I had never really been too much into the electronic music um, and just fell in love with the scene and the culture more than anything. Um, it, it's so much more than about, you know, notes and music that you're listening to. Um, it's about you're there. 
Um, and I think uh, just the whole overall electronic music community is so great in that, you know, fashion. And uh, it, it was eye opening for me um, on an acceptance level, like a human acceptance level. Um, and, and that was what was so enticing at first. Can I say something real quick? Yeah, go for it. I also, I think at that forest, a lot of people was, it was the first year going that they saw electronic music as more than just like, <laughs> there's, there's like, it's developed into this super cross genre platform of so many types that like, like that's what we love, why we love being able to experiment and write like different sounds and different things that haven't been done before because there are just now so many styles that like have cross pollinated, I guess is a good word. And I think people saw that in 2012 because like Flume was there before Flume was Flume, you know? Um, like they think they saw a bass connector for the first time maybe that year, but it was just, it was a, a bunch of kind of eye-opening experiences that I got the year before when it was like Skrillex and bass connector and 12th Planet and Zed and all these people who I'd never heard of and I saw was like and it kind of also you know through the acceptance i feel like that really maybe hooked gaither and dylan in a little bit to the idea of oh it's not just this repetitive like house music not that that's not some people's i mean that's some people's cup of tea they love it it's not for everyone but there's right. like so many different styles just like you can't say like oh i like rock you know what i mean there's so many right. types of rock. right yeah and i will say like standing in a field and getting just washed over with sub bass for the first time will definitely change your opinion <laughs> this this type of music for sure too like that live experience is so much different than listening to it on a phone or in headphones yeah i think it was a mixture of like just being there and then just getting so inspired and like just trying to break it down like how how do they do this how does how do these people you know make these sounds and how can we really you know push ourselves to try to like do something different but still have that same you know that vibe that that we feel when we go and see these artists uh but maybe like our own translation of that so yeah and i mean i can say uh you know i remember going to uh i forget what the name of it was but it was the like the electronic music i think they've changed the name of it but it was the the uh detroit like electronic music festival they had every yeah. year and i remember the first time i went to that i was like oh like i get this and i think it was because of that was because you've got that energy. I think Dylan, to your point, it is, uh, it is very, very different as far as like listening to headphones or, you know, in your car, than you know, being under an overpass with, you know, 300 people that are just jumping yeah. and sweating and having, having a great time. Um, I want, I did want to ask you guys, cause you know, all three of you have mentioned electric forest. And I think there's probably a lot of people out that are listening to the show that, that don't know what electric forest forest is, you know, kind of, let people know what is electric forest what is it all about things like that <laughs> what is electric forest? what is electric forest uh well uh i guess read uh read what is electric forest oh man like to sum it up it's like a kind of a cross platform started as uh rothbury for a few years yeah 2008 um, i think 2009 2010 yeah um, and it was everyone at that time from like Snoop Dogg to Dave Matthews Band to Fish, like, you know, just everyone you could imagine was there. Um, got big really fast. There was like tax problems and it kind of got shut down after two years for a year. Uh, a, a sub company bought the land and said, we'll help pay off the taxes by throwing a new festival, create an electric forest. And it started as just like a music festival, but turned into this art exhibit and like kind of like everyone co-creating an experience that you can go anywhere, talk to anyone about anything while you're there. You can go see the most interactive art that completely changes at nighttime compared to the daytime. Um, so it's just awesome to, I mean, it's just one of the most awesome places in the world. Everyone's so happy and you just are so happy there all the time. I don't know what really a better way to explain yeah, it. Yeah, it's a, it's a music festival in, uh, in Rothbury, Michigan. And since we're all Michigan natives, it was in our backyard and people come from all over the world to go there. Uh, and the, the cool thing about it, Reed kind of touched on there, is that like it's, it's kind of built up over the years because they have these big artists um, come out and make these big art installations. And then if they like it, they keep it for the next year. If they don't like it, they either move it or they redevelop it. And it's always kind of changed. And um, although it has like a, the same kind of similar vibe every year, it's always kind of different in that sense too, which is kind of cool. 
Yeah, that's that's really cool. I, unfortunately, I've never been, but from what what I understand about it, it exactly like like you said, it seems to be just as much as an art exhibit as it is a music festival. Um, which I think you know, anytime you can do something that is showcasing more than one form of art and putting it together, and then not only that, but then bringing so many people to it, I you know, I I can definitely understand why that would kind of have that magic or that 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 spirit that would kind of draw you guys into it and be like okay like this is a, a special place you know what i mean um and thank you for you know i was just wondering i was like if people were listening i was like they probably have no idea what that is so it, you know give them a little context um yeah, sure. so you know from what i understand you guys are mostly and definitely correct me if i'm wrong but it sounds like a lot of what you guys do is you know making these tracks and like sending them back and forth like are you working remotely um, or do you have sessions where you guys are all together? I mean, I know when you, you know, you do, uh, d- like shows and stuff like that, it, it seems like you guys might all go and do that together. But as far as the composing piece is that, you know, Hey, I come up with this idea and send it over, you know, walk me through what it's like, you know, third encounter walk. I, I'm, I know the, with the quarantine, it may be a little, it, it could be a little different anyway, but you know, when you guys are working on something, how does that start and, and what's the process through it? Dylan, go. Okay, so yeah, I mean, with with any given track, I mean, um, there's no set person that needs to be starting it or finishing it. I mean, it's it, if you have inspiration, go. Um, we we use a tool called Splice, and that allows us to collaborate with these projects like simultaneously. It's very easy to like save everything you've been working on text the fellas like hey this stuff's ready to go and you know they can hop on and then download that project and everything's up to date so that's like thank god for technology and being able to do that otherwise i don't know exactly how we would be able to share projects um so it'd be a lot tougher let's just put it that way so that's that's kind of the sharing process um like i said anyone can start it um third encounter started with like a violin sample Um, And then just kind of like spacing it out into this kind of melody and throwing drums on it. And Third Encounter started as like a really um, kind of experimental wobbly bass filled song. It it didn't have um, what we call future chords, like those future chords in the drop that are the really high toned, like uh, full spectrum sounding chords. Um, like just weren't even there for the longest time in this track. And it was just a late ad. It was really, um, it, it, it evolved quickly late. So it, it was just kind of um, an interesting process with that. So, I mean, we bounced this one around for five, four months, five months, something yeah. like that. I remember my, my favorite thing one day when I was going in on it, I was getting kind of stale or bored of the bass line. So I was like, you know, what if the notes, instead of just going like staying on these solid notes, what if it went up and down in an octave? And that's where if you listen to it now, you hear like it goes, doo. so the bass kind of moves with the sound. And then like that, Dylan said, once we added those super saw chords in there with it, it kind of like really filled it out. And, and with the bass kind of taking a walk, it, it kind of lets the, the listener kind of drift with the sound instead of it just being these stagnant, you know, chords and hits at the same time. Yeah, that's awesome. It's, you know, one thing I was, cause you mentioned splice and I'm familiar with, with splice and I know it, it gives you the ability. I mean, they're not a, a sponsor for the show by any means, but I, from what I understand, it's a, like a super, super cool like program and kind of gives you the ability to, to work remotely. Um, and, you know, I, I was listening and I was like, man, you know, this kind of makes me wonder how like somebody like the Postal Service did it back in the day, you know, because they didn't have Splice. They didn't have, you know, it's like how, you know, I, you can't even send a, a, a file in an email. It's over 25 megabytes without having to have I'm, it. Be I'm like pretty a sure link. that I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the Postal Service was called that because they would just send tracks back and forth via the mail. They would like record it on a cassette, send it off to each other. And- now, can you imagine doing it like that? Be like, hey, Dylan, <laughs> I sent you a baseline. It'll be there five to seven business days. So yeah, it's luck. around 87 beats a minute. Right? Roughly. <laughs> just a reel of tape, like not even a cassette, <laughs> just like got to hook it up, wind up the machine. 
so Dylan sent me a video yesterday of a guy using like a reel to reel, and then he had like a uh, like a a potentiometer knob that he could slow down the reel to reel, and he was just getting so into it, like <laughs> this is how you make it spacey. And Dylan, the first thing he said was like, "Gaither, this guy is totally you." And I was like, "Yeah, you're not wrong." <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you guys this too because you know Gaither, uh, we've played in bands, and I mean, we've definitely had when we're when we've been writing songs and things like that. I mean, I remember being you know recording vocals and you coming out and you've been like, "No, like that's not good. Go back." You know what I mean? So. When you're doing most of your work remotely, what is that process like? Because I, you know, is it just like a like a snarky, shitty text message, or is it sometimes, like, dude? You know I swear, I mean? like it's a, it's a no, we, yeah, yeah. We talk uh, all day, every day, and we're sending messages back and forth. And sometimes you'll get a mix because usually what happens is um, you open up the project, you work on it for however long you're working on it, and then you just bounce out where you're at, and then we send it to each other with via iMessage and then just to listen to it mm -hmm. and sometimes you open something up really excited because they're like they've been working on it for eight hours and you're like oh this is gonna be sick and you open up and you're just like what what happened like where did the track go <laughs> and some and sometimes you're just like oh my god like this is it this is amazing and so we do things where you know you might hear one thing and maybe i think it when we first started there was a lot of like notes where we'd say something like oh what if you did this what if you did this and eventually that just turned into us just taking it on our own like okay this is what i hear this is what i want to change and then send it back as opposed to trying to convince someone else that this is what you should do or this is what like it's like oh i hear this thing it's like instead of that just open the project put the thing in there that you hear and then listen to it and then we send it back and forth so that kind of developed over time i think it also came down really to uh all of us in even the last two years of this project constantly like working and becoming better musicians ourselves and better producers ourselves in our own time and kind of like like you said there is that moment still where it's like dude it's this isn't i don't like this this isn't my idea this isn't what represents what i was trying to do but the majority of the time now we it's we do hold each other accountable and expect the best because we've seen it and we know it can be done so it's like exactly like Eric said, if you want a certain sound a certain way, figure out exactly how to make it, go make it, put it in and save it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think people would be surprised at, you know, especially when you're in a group, you know, because if, if you're a solo artist or, if, you know, you're somebody like, you know, Bass Nectar or Skrillex, you're doing everything by yourself. It's like, oh, well, I don't have to worry about what anybody else says. But, you know, from having the background of being in a band and things like that, like, it's a lot of compromise. It's being like, you know, well, I like that idea, but what if you did it this way? And I know, you know, if someone's like, well, no, fuck you, this is how I'm doing it. Then, you know what I mean? That can, I just imagine with you guys, like, I like to think that you're like, someone's like, I don't like this. And they just send a K back. You know what I mean? There's like, it's just that like, <laughs> just like, oh, okay. Okay. I guarantee it at some point. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Cause you know, it sounds like, I mean, before the quarantine hit and everything like that, like you guys were pretty set with your action plan as far as like, hey, this is how we make, how we make music. Gaither, I know, I mean, I know you've had your own set of challenges uh, throughout the quarantine with, you know, big life events and stuff like that. But before we, you know, talk a little bit about that, like, has it been any different for you guys as far as, I mean, I know that you guys play shows and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that you're probably missing that. But as far as, you know, the way that you've been operating, have you had like more time to put, stuff out into the world i mean talk to me a little bit about what it's been like for you in this crazy time um i'd what? say so so probably like before the quarantine started um i like had the lucky the pleasure of like learning with eric and living with eric for a few years in lansing um and like we really got to know each other's patterns of writing and like what we liked and what our strengths were at the time um then i actually was also fortunate enough to live down right next to dylan for like eight months um, and we kind of figured out that ebb and flow as well. And now that I'm in Lansing, Eric's in like the, you know, Canton area and Dylan's down by Detroit. Um, before the quarantine, we'd still meet up maybe once a month, maybe like if we could, we managed to all get together, write together, um, kind of start ideas and then also work on finalizing like, hey, we're together. Let's, let's polish the crap out of this piece so we can release it and then just get it done. Um, and that was kind of our like flow. It'd be like start and like mold the piece separate and then get together and finish it again. Um, but you know, with the quarantine, obviously it's, you know, now it's, I'm still working. I think Eric had a little bit of a break, but is still working from home. Um, Dylan is not working, 
but he is like working on new, you know, fiscal ideas and adventures he's taking on. Um, so I think we've kind of had a mixed reaction of how he can create. I've created about the same. I think Eric's created like a, a little bit less than like the same because he's been working his butt off at work at his new job. Like he just graduated. Um, got a brand new so what, what you're saying is he's not pulling his weight. That's what you're saying right now. Yeah, well, my back <laughs> has been hurting because I'm carrying the team so much. Um, <laughs> no, but Dylan is, Dylan's also been like really learning. Um, and we've actually also been talking about taking on a venture of kind of a tool of even more lessons in um, kind of like a school platform, but uh, like a, a dojo, kind of like a producer's talking and helping each other out. Um, but I'll let someone else continue. <laughs> who oh, wants yeah. to go oh i mean continuing knowledge is key there's so much like right now ableton 10 came out not too long ago right guys like four right. months five months something. well we've only been using it now for okay. only like a couple months oh yeah i mean it's been out i think for about maybe about a year but we kind of delayed on doing the upgrade and then they had like a super sale as soon as the coronavirus kind of got you know a couple months ago got really big and then Ableton was just like, hey, here you go. Here's like 50% off or more. And we got like got it for a steal. So now we work on Ableton 10. Yeah. So I just like continuing the knowledge as as Reed was kind of touching on um, is huge. And I think Gaither has been the driving force in that since the beginning. Um, he, he's always learning new shit and telling us. Um, so yeah, that's dope. And and we need to keep doing that. But the more we do, I mean, the 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 doper more possibilities our ha our sound has. So, I mean, that's just enticing in itself and exciting. Like if, if you're not learning something new every day, like it's, um, life can get pretty stagnant, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. And, and I know you guys have been doing, uh, I know Dylan, it was your birthday recently and you guys did a live stream for that. You've been doing more live streams and, and things like that. Um, <clears throat> you know, has that, how has that been? I mean, because, you know, one thing for me, and I think this podcast has really helped is that this is a time right now where, you know, it's super easy to feel disconnected. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to like, I mean, I love my wife and, and my daughter, but like, I really just, I want to hug somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, Hey dude, good to see you. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. And so it's just, you know, it's just strange, man. And then you've got everything going on right now in, in Minnesota and you know, all just like just crazy crazy shit and dark shit going on and and you know how has it been for you has it been like a like a release or a cathartic experience to be able to do these you know live streams and and you know kind of still draw an audience in that virtual i mean i mean what's how, what's that feel like right now because i know with you know without the podcast right now i'd probably be going insane so it's like you know i know that's how it is for me but i didn't know if it was similar for you guys the live streams are huge right now, um, not only for Tetronauts as, you know, a musical artist group, like a, a group here, like uh, being a part of it and back to the community and being connected to the culture. Um, like, like I was talking about earlier, that's been helping me personally, just hopping on and watching an artist that I like um, and just watching the chat feed go. And like, it's, there's a certain type of person I think that this culture attracts and whether it, there's COVID or not, they're still attracted to the same group of people and the same kind of feeling they get when they're around that, that group of people. So um, the types of things that are said in an EDM live stream chat feed right now, like you, you should just go check it out if you want to feel a little bit better, you know, just it's, it's positivity and it's what we all need. So. Yeah. Yeah, That's I think awesome. to touch on that too. I mean, that I was thinking about today. Uh, you know, I was having a conversation with Allie earlier, and I and I was saying, you know what? Like Reed had mentioned, for the last couple months, my my music creativity has really taken just I mean, it really got dipped down. And I, I, it, I, for me, I have to be really inspired in order to like want to sit down and produce music. And I just haven't felt inspired in in a, in a while. And it took me back to realizing, you know, and listen, listen to the Joey and you on the podcast earlier. It's like the reason I've always made music is because it makes me happy. And I know that uh, maybe even on a micro scale, like that happiness can transcend and maybe make someone else happy. And I know that when I'm feeling dark and down that it, it sometimes it takes me to like really snap out of it. And go, hey, it's all right. I got to push through. Everything's going to be okay. Let me, let me just try doing something. 
and uh, I know that music always brings me back around. So like Dylan said, if it's not us doing a live stream, it's, it's watching our idols and people that we've always looked up to. Uh, I mean, like Twitch is almost always on my computer nowadays because there's always someone, you know, playing a set, uh, Claude Van Stroke with Dirty Bird and all the things that they're doing. And our, our friends at Electric Hawk putting on music festivals every weekend. Shout and, out. Yeah, shout out Electric Hawk. Uh, those are the guys that put out our, our latest record. And, you know, it's everyone working together and realizing like, yeah, we know that this is, it's a bad time for everyone, but music has something that has always tried to help bring people through. And in the darkest of times, that's when some of the best music is created. So all we got to do is put, you know, the pedal to the metal and, and, and try to do what we do. You know? yeah. oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Reed. I was going to say, and I think just to, real quick, I think it also, it kind of has given us a chance to, you know, like with the COVID and everything slowing down, kind of like reset and even just like the industry in general, like, you know what I mean? It's not, no one, money's not drawing like talent right now. Like everything, everything shut down. It's not about ticket sales. It's not, that, that's, it's kind of this weird limbo where like everyone's on an equal playing field. I mean, artists can do streams and have their, their followers watching them. People can donate, but like, it's really kind of just like this, this, this open cool space where like I think that everything might be changing for the better and it might take a while but it may might change the industry for the better yeah and, and I'm I, I agree with you because sorry there's a like a 18 wheel or something going by I got real loud here for a second um but I mean I agree with you because you know some of my favorite you know I'm a singer songwriter guy so Matt Nathanson has been doing you know, live streams like every week. And he's got, you know, I mean, his first record came out like 94 or something. So he's got, you know, a huge catalog and taking back Sunday has been doing live streams. And so it's you know, just, I will say, even though it's crazy. And like you, like you said, ticket sales are down, right? Um, we had tickets to go see Trevor Noah here in Nashville and they canceled that. They're like, that shit's not happening. So um, it's, you know, even though, ticket sales are down you can't go i really do feel like this is a crazy time as far as like i don't know i feel like you get a chance to almost like know the artists that you're into right now or the artists that are willing to on a little bit more like of an intimate level you know what i mean because these people are doing these live streams they're not like all right we're gonna go from this song into this song they're like stopping they're telling stories about like recording it like they're in their home so it's just like a i don't know man it's a it's a weird feeling it feels almost uh you know, even though it's being done digitally and being put out over the internet, it almost has a feeling of being, you know, like ultra organic compared to like, I just went and saw you at, at, you know, a, a thousand room venue and there's a light show and you know what I mean? Like your whole band comes out. It's just, you know, you sitting and, and doing your thing. Do you think, I mean, with the, the live streams that, that you guys are doing, what kind of, what kind of feedback have you gotten? You got people asking to do more. I mean, like, you know, what, what kind of responses are you getting from doing this? Cause I know you did one just the other night. Yeah. Dylan, you want to, you want to take this one, Dill? Yeah, I would say the other night went really well with electric cock. Um, we, we would love to do more streams. I, I'm sure we're going to um, right now. We don't have any like planned currently. Um, but there was even some talking uh, with a buddy of mine. He was suggesting that we each like uh, start doing like a set every other week or something like that. Since we can't necessarily be together. Um, that's kind of what's tough right now is, is our mixing style uh, when we play shows is kind of this three headed rotating monster um, that just kind of filters in and out and moves simultaneously with each song. Like it's, it's, we can't do that right now. So it's, you know, um, a little different maybe product than than maybe a Tetranaut show would be. Um, but we're really like working our ass off to make sure it's as close as we can possibly make it to the real thing. Um, and, and I think that's important. And just kind of touching on, uh, again, like this live stream culture that's kind of being created like around this is there's so fewer distractions now. Like you said, there's no lights, there's no bar to walk to, there's no individual people to turn and talk to so it's i mean everything's on the music to be phenomenal right so like it, it absolutely has to be good wonderful music that makes you feel something in order for it to be attractive i think right now yeah i think one thing that's been oh sorry dylan i mean did you get cut off there uh, one thing that's been really inspiring too is that everyone like the envelope keeps getting pushed and if you look at a lot of these big uh, like uh, Electric Daisy Carnival did their 
their EDC, Las Vegas, all indoor. And they had like two of these huge stages with like rotating cameras and lights and theatrics. And it's, it's cool to see everyone just trying to really not outdo each other, but really push the envelope to try to keep people entertained and like keep people guessing and wanting more and doing cool things that way. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, I mean, yeah, I've noticed that too with some of the, um, uh, which some of like just the viral video, I don't know if you saw like the, uh, like the virtual stunt man fight video where like all these stunt men, like no. one person would punch a camera and then it would cut and the other person would like get hit and come. And it's like 15 different dudes in like a virtual fight. And it's like, oh, cool. you know, no one would have ever, no, I don't think anybody would have ever thought to do that had you not be forced into these circumstances. You know what I mean? It kind of makes you be like, well, shit, how am I going to operate? Cause things are, are completely different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to talk to, uh, to Eric a little bit, man. Cause I, you know, I've, my heart broke for you in March, man. Cause I know that you were, I mean, you were, you did get married, but not in, not in the way that, you know, you were hoping to, uh, yeah, Mr. Bates, everybody. <laughs> Mr. Bates. Yeah, and, and, the, and the and the missus is is right over there on the couch. She's currently uh, one of my on always. On. She's yeah, been one of my favorite people for as long as I've known her. So I mean, there you could not have a uh, could not have a a better matchup in my opinion. Thanks, man. But you know, I want to talk because I mean, you guys had like the venue booked. I mean, we had the invitation on the fridge and it was funny. Cause I was like, well, unless they shut us down for COVID man, I gotta, you know, I gotta work. And then they shut us down and then you shut down the wedding. And I was like, well, like crazy, but like, you know, talk, I mean, talk a little bit about that. Cause I know like, I, I mean, me personally, I would have been like, this is awful. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. was it hard to, to stay positive? You know, tell me a little bit about what was going on with you. Yeah. Um, I, Everything, you know, just happened so quickly and um, we got, I should, I mean, I should say like even these two guys, uh, you know, Reed was going to be my best man and, and Dylan was going to stand up there as well. Uh, also with our buddy Dave, shout out Tram. And uh, everything within like two weeks leading up to our wedding, because our wedding was going to be or is, was on March 21st. Um, by March 14th, we, we had pulled the plug on everything and it was really hard, especially on, on my wife. And cause she has, she's done so, she did so much rigorous planning. Uh, I mean, the, the wedding was going to be sick. It, it would have been really awesome. There was a string quartet that she had planned to like, you know, walk, walk her down the aisle or play her down the aisle and uh, everything, everything was ready to go. And then with the, within two weeks up to the wedding, you know, coronavirus really started getting, the surge started getting big. And one when, week. what's that? One week. One, yeah, she's saying one week. <laughs> um, what happened was when the NBA put, really pulled the plug on it, when the NBA stopped playing, we knew that really everything was going to get crazy. Then it was like, that was the first day. And then the next day, uh, what, what was the second thing that happened, babe? What was after the, the NBA... Oh, yeah, basically all sports had ended. Yeah. And Allie works for, for Fox Sports. And, and so she's like, like vigorously changing all of the planning for everything that's going to play on the television and like going crazy that way. And then we're like, what are we going to do about the wedding? We had people that were calling that felt scared. And they were like, listen, I don't know if we can make it to the wedding. And we were like, no, we understand. And, and so then we made the decision that we were like, hey, what if we just did a small wedding with like, 15 people and we just had a close knit group and then that then it was like you can't have gatherings of any any sort and we were like oh no so everything just kept getting worse and worse until finally we just decided we we're like hey we're going to cancel the wedding we're, we're not going to do it well, when everything gets figured out maybe we'll try to redo something and uh we a couple days before the wedding was supposed to go down i think it was like the wednesday before um Allie's mom had stopped in the town and I should probably side note here that Allie's grandma also got really sick and had to go to the hospital during all of this. So we were like, she was trying to take care of her grandma and try to get that things figured out. And then the wedding fell through and Allie's mom was like, well, what, what if you guys just did it anyway? And we started thinking, we we're like, you know what, what if we did do it? What if we, you know, just set up a live stream and, and, and kind of got Val, our, our officiant in on FaceTime and, we just FaceTimed in everybody and, and we like literally within two days before the wedding, I had a whole live stream set up on YouTube and I was like, we're just going to do this. And Allie, 
Allie put her dress on and I put on my suit and we stand we stood there in grandma's uh family room and we got married via FaceTime. <laughs> like it, it, you know, it was, it was crazy, but it ended up working out pretty all right. Well, I'll tell you, man, I like I felt so bad just because like you know, my wife and I on the 13th of this month was our four year wedding anniversary. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, um, I mean, let's see if we make it to five. No, I'm, just, no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I'm just kidding. She's, she's, uh, she's, my, she's listening. Awesome. She's listening. She's probably laughing and being like, yeah, maybe four and a half. Talking, um, talking about his wife. But, um, but you know, for us, we got married in the park with just my family there and her family. And then we threw a party the next, the next night. And that was our thing. And even that there was so much work that went into it that, you know, went, cause you know, Allie was sending out messages. I was getting messages on Facebook. Hey, like if you're, you know, still planning on coming, just let us know, you know, and it, it like seemed like, okay, they're going to do it. And then it just felt like the rug came out. So when I saw the pictures and saw that you guys had done the live stream, I was, I took my phone. I ran to care. I was like, look at this. Like, look how, like, look how fucking awesome this is. Like, they're not going to be stopped. Like, you know what I mean? I was just, like I said, like I've known you forever and, and Allie is, is just an amazing human being in general. So it kind of broke my heart that you weren't getting that special thing. And then to see that you were like, no, we're still going to do this. We're just going to do it the way that we can. I think it was, I don't know, man. It was just, it was real scary at that time. You know what I mean? Like you mentioned the the guy from the NBA and all like, like I think, when everything first happened, I don't know if you guys were the same, but I was like, Oh, this is like the flu. You know what I mean? It's like, it's the flu. It's, you know, big hype. And then they shut out, you know, like all sports went down. Do you guys see the video of that NBA player who was touching all the microphones? And then the oh, next yeah. day he got COVID. <laughs> he was <diagnosed laughs> with COVID. I was like, you fucking That's asshole. Terrible. Um, but I think for me, that was like kind of the same thing. I was like, okay, this is something bigger. Like we don't, you know what I mean? Like, we don't shut things like when's the last time the NFL has ever been shut down. You know what I mean? So, um, but I don't know, man, I was just, I was so happy that you guys, you know, you still got your wedding cake and everything like that. And, and the, uh, the pictures you guys eat now, I was wondering whose house you were in though. Cause I was like, that didn't look like Gaither's apartment. I was like, yeah. either that or he's made some serious yeah. upgrades. Hey Al, you want to say hi real quick? She's, she's set up a dog to go outside, but I'll let her say, let her say hi to them. Hello. Hi, John Lloyd. Hi, you're on the John Versations podcast. This is episode 16. <laughs> I've been a big fan of John and Robots in the Garden. We've talked to John my entire life. <laughs> yep, well, I don't, your entire, I don't know if that's true. The entire <laughs> life, true. I would say. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> maybe, maybe a good half. Dude, John, just so that you know, and I didn't know this until like much later in our relationship, but Allie was at um, a Madison AD show where we played out at, uh, at the skate park for, um simplicity like an outdoor skate thing mm -hmm. it was like in october joy will know what i'm talking about but she was there because she had a huge cross on rusty like Ooh. Ooh. i did <laughs> my dad had to drive me i didn't even have a license she was like yet. 13 or something <laughs> <laughs> was i was like oh my gosh i'm so cool <laughs> yeah we and joey were talking about uh well russell now because he's an adult but oh, yeah, um, Russell, sorry. Uh, how he jumped off his bass amp and unplugged it like in the middle of that audition doing his yeah. Does, I don't know. This is funny. To, it's, it's crazy. I mean, especially knowing you and, and Dylan, as long as I have, it's like, it's crazy to think about like all the little steps that have kind of got you. I mean, like Gaither, you're a married man. You guys have got, you know, you guys are putting out music now that's getting just crazy hits and stuff like that. So it's, it's cool to be able to be like, Oh yeah, I, I know these guys personally. I know the work that they've put in, you know, gone from point A to point B to point C and, and, I don't know. That's one of the reasons I wanted to have all you guys on is just, you know, being able to, to kind of celebrate that growth and, and, and celebrate what you're putting out there. Cause like I said, it's, it's fucking crazy out there right now. So, yeah. you know, there's not a, know. okay, get out of here. Right, I'm bidding you farewell. All right, enough. All right. Reed, see you dude. One of those sweatshirts. <laughs> what sweatshirts? Yeah, touch not. Look at the, he's got I want that sweatshirt. Reed made oh. some touch not to merch. Sweet, I'm gonna have to get one of those too. If you're watching on YouTube. Clubs and merch. Hey, Reed, where can people get those sweatshirts? Um, it's like super underground. First two runs, gonna be worth you know, millions of dollars one day. No. Okay. Well, when you can not buy them <laughs> super underground, run. will you give me the link so I can? You no, know, we're, we're we're working on it. I've literally only done two like ten uh, shirt runs right now, and it was literally just a couple of friends who said they wanted one. I was like, all right, yeah, it'd be cool to make them. Send a couple to the guys actually. Um, just did another run, and they have one for Bates and uh, one for Gaither. 
and we've just been kind of like doing that. So we're gonna get a, a little bit bigger order together here, some t-shirts soon. Yeah, we'll Sweet. get one for, for we'll get one for you too, JC, so you can. Rock yeah, it I'll wear it. Yeah. I'll rock it out, man. I might have to <laughs> send you guys some John Versations swag. Yeah, swag bag for sure. For sure. Um, well, you know, I want to ask you guys too because I mean, I know that you had mentioned, you know, when you guys play shows, you know, like like Dylan said, it was like a three-headed, you know, rotating beast, right? And you know, one thing I've been asking is, because I'll be honest, I've had a lot of my like friends who've, who've made music or who are making music on the show right now, because like, you know, especially if, if that's a big part of your income, like it's, you know, just another reason that it's, it's crazy right now. Um, I wanted to ask you guys, in your opinion, like, like, what do you imagine that first show back looking like? You know what I mean? Like, like, if you picture in your head, I mean, do you, is it social distancing? Like, you know, half capacity? Like, what do you think it's, what do you think it's going to be like when you guys are finally all three able to, to do your thing live? I think it's going to be, um, first of all, just a lot of excitement and energy, tons of that, because just getting back in a place where we can share energy with other people, that's going to be huge. Um, I'm going to want to hug literally everyone probably. <laughs> idea so i'm gonna have to think about that a little further <laughs> my plan of <laughs> that's better than just tongue kissing everybody like dude it's so ah. good to see you <laughs> oh best friend frenchies bro yeah. oh my god it's been so long yeah, yeah. And that's one thing about the like the edm culture as well is that you know it's it's plur baby all day peace love unity and respect because you know you can't go two feet without giving someone a hug that you don't even know and and i think that that's you know maybe we'll take a step back from that Maybe there'll be some new development as far as like bows or, you know, like, I don't know, it'll, the hand to hand contact might shift. Um, but I think one thing that maybe comes from all of this is that people might be a little bit more aware of actually how you're feeling. And, and if you are sick, then to not go out when you, with a bunch of people, because I know that I've been guilty of it. Like I've, I've felt like, like shit before and I've either gone into work or I've gone to play shows. And I mean, with robots in the garden, I mean, there's nights where like we couldn't even, you know, sing or do anything. We just felt like garbage, but you still go out there and you do the thing. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe now, maybe we'll take a step back from that and say like, if there's people, like if you're not feeling good, then don't go to a place with a bunch of people to potentially share those germs with anyone. Maybe, maybe we learn from this, uh, this whole pandemic in that sense. I, I think that there is yeah, a big positive in this because I think that um, we've been programmed for a long time, even like everyone in society to just like work no matter what, you know what I mean? Like you have to work. A lot of us have to work to survive paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. And this, this reset and this hit to the economy kind of made everyone first realize like, oh, we don't have any guarantees that people have to appreciate their employees and like even give them sick time, you know, like, and it kind of, it, we're in this reset right now to look at a positive that like, yeah, now people are thinking more from an aspect of, you know, I am sick. Like maybe I shouldn't go into work and like having companies that are like hopefully opening up a little bit more freedom to being like, Hey, I don't feel good. I'm not coming in, you know, not getting dinged for that. Yeah. Not feeling bad about it or feel like a guilt trip. Like, Oh, you're not coming in today. Well, whatever. And it's like, no, I'm, you know, I'm really not that game. Like, I mean, it's, yeah. Thank you for staying home should be the new answer. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I will say, I mean, you guys are very optimistic. I see like the, like the operation haircut and Lansing and, you know, all, and I'm just like, you like, it just, they're idiots. Oh my God, dude. It like, you know, cause I, I'm, I'm, 15 minutes out of Nashville now, but my whole family still lives up there with you guys. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's important for me to make sure that I know what's going on there. Cause that's, you know, always home. And so I, you know, I see, you know, operation haircut and then you see, you know, dudes with AR 15s just like screaming that's, in the face of police. And it's like a mile you know, from me. Yeah. It's a mile from here. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean like, you know, try, you know, when that's going on, if you have a, a, a health emergency, try getting to the hospital, you know what I mean? Cause just, it's just asshole central. You know what I mean? So I don't know, man, I'm hoping I, I've really, I think the thing for me is that like, I'm, I'm really hoping that people are going to, I mean, I can't really, you know, we've been doing the podcast remotely. So I think I've spent more time in front of the computer now than I have in forever, but it's like talking to people. I'm, I think what I'm really hoping is that, you know, people will be a little bit more disconnected from the digital once everything is kind of like back to whatever the the normal is going to be. And 
maybe give us, you know, a little bit more of op- opportunity to like engage with each other. You know what I mean? Like maybe like we'll go out to dinner and not everybody's going to be like, Oh yeah. How was your day? That's great. You know what I mean? Right. But like actually have a conversation a little bit. It's, it's, it's at least what I'm hoping for. You know what I mean? Cause it's just, I don't know, man. I, I miss seeing people, dude. I like, we were supposed to come home. Uh, we were supposed to come home the month before your wedding and the kid got sick and we weren't able to come home. And then, you know, then all this happens. So I haven't seen my family in like a year. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, just want to come home i miss you i miss you so much so but well and one thing i was thinking let me ask you guys what do you think about this so you know the dude from flaming lips had one of these but you know those big like clear balls that you can get in and like move around like the hamster balls yeah i think the first tetranaut show back everybody gets a hamster ball and then you could just like run and bounce because think about you can't have as many people right because your diameter is much bigger and then you can bounce into whoever you want to i think i don't know if you end up doing it just give me credit that's all yeah we can put that into the works (laughs) so oh sorry go ahead read so real quick i've seen a couple adaptions of people like reopening bars in i mean at least trying to six foot spacing making things like adult versions of the baby harnesses Mm -hmm. have the, the circles that you can like move in your circle but you can't get too close you can bumper car each other and stuff yeah uh, yeah i saw that there was a bar that like it was like basically like kitty pools that were just like went around your waist on suspenders so like you couldn't get that close to anybody yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean it's it's i think it's uh people have been did you see the guy i think he was in ann arbor who built like the buzz Lightyear suit with like the the six feet on both sides of them so you couldn't get near him <laughs> but, I saw one thing where a guy had a pool noodle on his head, so they're like, no matter where they go, no they'd be like hitting people. <laughs> so let me ask you guys this: you know what what is next for you guys, right? Because you know, like, hopefully we'll be coming out of quarantine. I know you guys are working on. You know, it sounds like you know when you work on a, a a single or drop a single, something like that, it like takes you a couple months. Are you, you know, are you working on like an album or, I mean, is there anything you plan in like another, like, like full length release? Like wh- what is the, what's the future look like for the Tetranauts? Yeah, Dylan, you want to field this one about uh, like what, what our plan was for 2020. I mean, before all this started really going down, <laughs> this was like pre 2020, our plan for 2020. December, December of 2019, but yeah, the plan going into this year was release at least one track a month, whether that's a relaunch or whether that's um, you know an original track or a collab. It doesn't really matter too much to us. Uh, we just want to make sure that consistency is there with releasing tracks. So, and I think honestly, it, it's been getting, um, it, it's been having some success by going about it that way because the consistency is just it's allowing people to see our names more often. Um, one of the goals with, with releasing singles was that um, the amount of times that, you know, it gets shown in front of people's eyes. So kind of from a marketing perspective, like, you know, the more singles you put out there, the more times people are going to see your name. So we, we kind of thought about it in that way and just really hammering through the consistency and finishing tracks. Um, I was looking the other day and we have, I think it's up to like 486 um, <laughs> projects. <laughs> yeah. How many of those are released guys? Like 14, 12, like 14. Yeah. yeah. And there's several that have been on the back burner, uh, third encounter being one of them, because I think originally that was going to be our March release. Is that right guys? We were going to do that one in March. Uh, but we, we shop out our, our, our records when they're done. So we just send them to different L- or record labels and all that stuff. And then that's when we got into conversations with Electric Hawk as far as putting out the release for Third Encounter. And then they instantly came back and they were like, yeah, we want to do it. It's going to be May 21st. And we were like, May? This is the one we wanted to drop in March. Yeah. And so yeah, three weeks to finish the song. Yeah, we instantly had to kind of revamp what, what was going to be coming out because we wanted to stick to that thing as far as putting out music. Um, and so we did Mind Over Mind. We, we kind of we finished that one really quick. Uh, because we just kind of had a fire under our butts. So we finished that one and put that one out in March instead. And then uh, we did um, uh, the Grapevine relaunch for April. Uh, and then all of it kind of like gearing up towards the third encounter launch, which was going to be in May. So 
we've been still sticking to the one track a month thing. And uh, we have a couple other ones uh, that were featured in our, uh, the, the podcast, not the podcast, the live stream that we just did on Tuesday. Um, we, we played them in there and they sounded awesome and we got some good response on that. And so those ones will probably be the next ones we release. Uh, but we have, like Dylan said, there's like over 400 projects that we have going where it might be like a single eight bar loop or it might be like a five minute track that just hasn't been released yet. Yeah, Mind Over Mind is the one that Millie really gets into. That's the one yeah, she just is like my my personal favorite. Yeah, it's it's a dope track, man. I heard it when it when it launched. I was like, I gotta check this out. And I've also been trying to, you know, for my friends who people I know who put out music online. I mean, I know those streams help. You know what I mean? So it's like if something's dropped, like play it, share it. You know what I mean? Um <clears throat> and so I remember I was like, I had to check it out and I was in the living room and she's got these little they're baby blue sunglasses with pink rims and i put them on her and put the song on and she just started moving her arms <laughs> and i was like i was like is this baby on molly because she yeah. <laughs> she's having a good ass time i feel everything yeah. molly. <laughs> I, I feel the color blue like she was just having a, <laughs> having a good time i think dylan always feels the color blue <laughs> Always blue. Yeah. Always blue. Well, you know, one, one other thing I wanted to ask you guys, um, you know, especially right now, because it is such a different world. Like if people are digging, you know, people, people who are listening to the show and, and, you know, let's say they've never heard it. They find, they like what they hear and things like that. Like what is the best way to support you guys right now? I mean, is there a way like, can people, you know, donate? Can they, you know, I know the the singles are up on like iTunes and stuff like that, right? So they can go and purchase them on iTunes. But, you know, coming from, you know, I've got you guys on the show, right? So like, what is what is the the best way to support you in, in your opinion? So that way, you know, anybody who wants to knows the best route to go. Any interaction, man. I mean, yeah, if, like our post, that's phenomenal. If you listen to our music, that's really this is just our gift to the world and, and something that we feel is is a part of what we're meant to be doing here on this planet so um whether a bunch of people like it or a few people like it that's not really why we're doing this it's more about just um allowing us to kind of do what we feel like we're meant to be doing honestly it's it and and honestly share some cool ideas some different messages that um maybe are not able to be shared in other types of music. And I think that's where um, electronic music just has such a cool niche. Um, like we put Alan Watts quotes in our music. Um, Terrence McKenna, bass and actor put Martin Luther King Jr. Um, quotes. I mean, it's all, it, it's, it, it's trying to expand thought. And, and I think, um, you know, that's really the goal with, with including those types of things in the music as well, so. Yeah, I, I think uh, with the EDM culture, you know, it, it's it, it heavily exists also with the drug culture, as many people know, and not not that they're a hundred percent intertwined, but they're definitely coexisting together. And one of the most powerful things about that relationship is because if you have someone and you are, you know, let's say experimenting with with drugs or even you know sobriety or whatever it may be, you you may go to one of these shows and not really know too much about yourself or know maybe your purpose here or whatever it may be. And a lot of people get opened up in a way where they kind of feel things for the first time. And that in itself is so inspiring to try to chase, chase your, your dreams and, and chase the things that maybe bring you happiness. Because like I had mentioned earlier in the cast, it's like that little bit of happiness, it, it can then, it radiates off you. And although fear does the exact same thing and it spreads just as quickly, you know, it only takes a little bit of light to shine on a dark area. So like when you, when you have just that little bit of hope and, 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 and passion, it can really, you know, make breakthroughs either in a person or in a people or whatever it may be. So like Dylan said, we, we often try to, we use these inspirational quotes that we hear that we find inspiring. We, we take that, we try to repurpose it and then put it back out there. Um, I think it was uh, Mark Ronson that did like a whole TED talk on remixing. And that was one of his main points is that like the music itself 
it, there's nothing that's completely original anymore. It's impossible to have complete originality, but what you can do is you can remix life. So you can take the things that, that inspired you, put a spin on it and put it back out there. And then maybe that will help to inspire others. Yeah. And I'd say as far as like supporting us, like it's really sh like just like the culture of the EDM community it's sharing is caring like no matter what you listen to music on like you said Apple Music Spotify Google Play like Deezer like even you know what I mean we're on Napster <laughs> like yeah we are on Napster I mean, like, <laughs> Uses don't tell Lars Ulrich. Yeah, don't pissed. tell Lars. I think he owns it. <laughs> don't they own it now? <laughs> I have no idea. I have no clue. I just They're not a sponsor of the pissed. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I've been yeah. trying, dude. I've been trying so hard. Like, Lars, get over here in those tennis shorts and support my podcast. Uh, well, yeah, it's like whatever you listen to music on, like our originals are on all of those. Like SoundCloud is where we also put our relaunches and we have some mixtapes on there. Um, and we're going to be uploading, you know, more, even like the live stream from the other night, we're probably going to upload and maybe make it an audio visual experience. So, you know, you can throw on your TV, the visualizer that's happening and listen to it. And besides just be immersed in sound also like kind of have your, your taste buds teased for your eyes as well. Yeah. I think one thing about me is that like, I mean, I, I, I don't need you to like send me five or 10 bucks. Sure. It'd be awesome for a cup of coffee, but I'd much rather you just hit the like button or maybe leave a comment that says, Hey, this was cool. I showed my mom and she really liked it. You know what I mean? Just those things are just as powerful. I she was that. also on Molly. My mom. Yeah. Mom was also on Molly. <laughs> <laughs> Great time. Ah. Well, you know, let me ask you this. Cause you know, since you like, since you, kind of like brought it up and segued into it and and I, I don't I also don't like to I don't like to pigeonhole it you know what I mean because I think it's real easy to be like oh yeah you know everyone who's into EDM is you know like just chomping on pills and you know what I mean I, I think it's just it's a stereotype that yeah you know I'm sure just like any other type of music you know, you'll meet people who are you know x amount of years sober or like dabble or recreational what you know what I mean but what do you think it is First of all, do you think it's do you think it's as true as a stereotype portrays it to be? And second of all, if it is, what do you think it is about about that music, about that culture that kind of ties it hand in hand like that? As far as the drug use goes. All right, I'll go well, forward. the drugs definitely help. And if you're not into electronic music and you do some drugs, you might be into electronic music after that point. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think one thing I wanted to make a point of was that I think that right now with like the Twitch culture and the way that the whole industry has shifted, like Reed had mentioned, is that it kind of shows you that you, you don't really need the drugs for any of it. You, you know, the music is, is in itself. I mean, I hate to quote bass actor, but he says music is a drug. And I, I think that's the, the case is if you, if you truly like something and it, you don't need that stuff, you know. Sure, have we all experimented with it? Absolutely. Like, I mean, I you gotta know what you're dealing with, but you know, at the same time, I, we're not in here like just doing drugs all the time, like we're making this music. I mean, I'm sober for the I, most part. <laughs> I think I think that it it is an avenue. I think that the scene does open up the people to the opportunity to experiment with things they haven't done before. Um, I think it's also extremely important in today's like day and age to test anything that you're doing and make sure that it's safe it's extremely important like to do that before you touch anything that you're putting into your body it's your temple um and i think that the scene kind of opens up people to that but i think that it's also a lesson you learn pretty quick that certain substances specifically psychedelics which are linked a lot with the scenes um are uh, are, are have been a learning tool for many many years maybe not lsd it's you know created in the last century but you know, other things have been used by other cultures for, for centuries and centuries for mind expansion and for, for moving forward and for like having that shutter opened just a little bit differently and kind of experiencing more of a wholeness and a connectivity to everyone instead of, um, you know, just doing it to watch shit wiggle on the walls and, you know, right. talk, to, talk to elephants. Like, uh, uh, yeah, cool, but I think it also is a very cool tool that now... I utilize maybe once a year, if that, you know, it's like not really something that like I learned from it and it helped me grow and I don't really like need it anymore. I still yep. appreciate it from time to time, but I'm not out there, you know, munching pills of anything. The music really does give me shivers when I listen to it, when I listen to the messages, that's like really my drug. Yeah. And I, I've, 
even in you know my dabbling days i've never i've, I've just never messed with psychedelics i just you know it was just never my thing but um <clears throat> but you know from what i understand it's not that's not something you can be like oh yeah i did it monday wednesday friday and sunday and i was you know totally yeah. you know tuesday and thursday i was great i was functioning like a door like normal human being you know what i mean but um yeah i mean I, I can definitely see that you know from everything i've heard um you know there's a uh i, I don't know if he's listening but uh, uh gaither i think you might remember keith used to play uh in uh in avenue with uh jay mcglone yeah. who's older yeah, we had, yeah he he took some acid in front of me one time and fell asleep and i was like well i don't know if that's for me he just passed out <laughs> so i was like I, I can't i can't sleep on this stuff yeah, yeah. so i don't i, I don't know he's <laughs> He was like, you guys want to do something? I was like, no, I'm good. Let me watch you first. And like 30 minutes later, he just passed out. And I was like, I don't think that's what that's, that's supposed funny. to do. But yeah, nope. um, what I mean, what about you, Dylan? What do you think? I mean, you were being awfully quiet over there. So I wanted to pick your brain on it. Um, well, yeah, I think it's uh, an off. Just drugs are an opportunity to see a different perspective open up a door into some different insights than you ever had before. Um, I try to explain it in experiences that I've had. So I guess everyone tells you never to look at a mirror, I guess, when you're tripping, right? I made that true. Whether you want to call it a mistake or not, it's up to you. Subconscious decision. Right. I made that decision and um, essentially looked into a mirror and my body dripped away and essentially an outline of a, a being was left and um inside of it was was literally my actions who how i've treated people and and how i've you know been to other people other than me and uh so without that experience i'm not who i am today um that was a huge turning point for me and that was back in like 2012 2013 when I had my first uh, few experiences there in East Lansing. So, um, so as long as it offers you something to learn and grow by, I think it's a great tool. Uh, as you guys said, it's not something to do all the time at all. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, our, our, our nation and our world has, you know, really dealt with, uh, with problems with abuse and everything can get abused and especially psychedelics. And they're, they're not there for abuse. They're there to be learned from. Um, and you know, like Reed was saying, I, I, I don't even remember that. I can tell you the last time that I, that I did something profound like that, but I know that the times that I did had lasting impressions on me and I, uh, yeah, same way, like what Dylan said, I ultimately wouldn't be the person that I am right now. Had I not had those experiences, I'd be a totally different person. Yeah. I mean, from, from what I understand, you know, and I think that kind of ties into, to what Dylan was saying, but it, it almost like it forces you, to, it can be a tool that will force you to kind of reconcile some things that you maybe haven't dealt with and, and things like that. Cause when you're describing, you know, that experience, that's what I was thinking in my head. I was like, Oh, like you're just like examining those actions and, and getting a glimpse at like, do I like what I've done up until this point? Do I want to continue that path? And, and yeah, I know. I mean, there's been tons of studies out there, and it's. I mean, I know microdosing is used in therapy for depression and and things like that. I don't know, back, you know, having a kid and everything like that. I'm like, I barely even like drink anymore. You know, yeah. it's just like, yeah. I, I told my wife, I was like, I'm more sober now than I think I have been like in my like entire life. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, and that we we like attest to that because again, it's the same thing with us. I mean, we're, none of us are big drug users uh, in any way, shape, or form. I'm, um, I mean, like I said, I'm sober for most of the time. I like to have some drinks maybe on the weekend or something like that, but I work a job that, that, that kicks my butt during the week and I ain't got time to like waste on that stuff. And, but it's good for a reset maybe once in a while, especially during these dark times. Um, I, I, I mean, I guess I can be honest and say, yeah, be so, honest, I'll be honest. Uh, go ahead, Reed. Yeah, you go ahead. Uh, so I, yeah, you know, I, uh, experimented with quite a few psychedelics in my life. Um, and figured out like, you know, the, the purpose really of each, my, my explanation of the purpose of each. And, um, you know, the other day it's kind of, we've been like in this rut, you know, and we like, we finished third encounter and we've been trying to like move forward and I've been working a bunch and I finally had a couple days off and was like, you know, I still have a couple grams of mushrooms. 
from like New Year's Eve, from when I went down and saw my favorite artist, actually with Dylan last second, we drove to Louisville from Michigan, saw him on New Year's Eve, um, and I had these left over and I literally just ate them because I was like, I just want to like, you know, feel that connection. I want to like be happy. And it was the first time I'd literally, like I didn't know New Year's and that day were the first two times since I went to Burning Man two years ago. And then when I was at Burning Man, I did something one night and I hadn't done anything for like a year before that. So it really was just a spur of the moment. Like I had it and I was like, you know, I've been in this seasonal, you know, it's been gray. It's finally getting sunny. It's finally getting nice. The birds are out. The animals are back. The leaves are coming. Like let's I want to talk to Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hug a fucking tree. <laughs> so I did. Yeah, man. I, like, you know, that, like, I think anything if used in the right, like that's the reason I don't drink very much anymore. Cause I've, I found out that I'm not someone that's like, Oh, I, you know, I'd like to have a beer every now and then it's like, if I'm going to drink, it's because I'm going to get like blackout drunk. And so like, I've just been like, if I'm not in the mood to do that, there's no point in me just like, you know, sipping one. Cause it, you know, just doesn't do that for me. And <clears throat> I, I think that just kind of speaks to my, I think that might also be why I never dabbled in anything like that when I was younger. Cause I was like, if I get into something, I want to go like just fucking balls to the wall with it. So I was like, you know, if I ever got into like Coke or psychedelics, I'd be, you know, doing like an eight ball a day and just be like, this is fucking oh, awesome. I love it. You know what I mean? But I'd like, I can't, I'd, I'd, I'm afraid of that if I were to ever, you know, ever would have tried anything like that. I think that's kind of like a nice thing though. Also, like I didn't luckily get into it like younger. I was 22 before I experimented with anything. I think even later for like these two guys, which I think also really was kind of that point of being able to utilize and realize that, you know, these have purposes outside of just like partying. Like we're not doing this every weekend going out, you know, it's like we've gone to festivals and done, done it a few days, but we're not doing this all the time. We like figured out really quick because we had already matured uh, how to, you know, deal with it. Cause yeah, if I'd found this when I was in high school, Oh my goodness. It's like six thirty, yeah. gotta be at work in forty five minutes. Let me just Let's pop go. two grams and make it a great day. Oh, man. <laughs> well, uh I just want to say thank you guys for sharing that because I know it's, you know, like I said, I think it's uh I think it's easy for people who maybe see it from the outside to to stereotype it and just be like, Oh, it's just people like getting fucked up and then just get all sweaty and jump around. You know what I mean? But like I've also, you know, heard it from the other side quite a bit that it's like, you know, something that makes you see the world a little bit differently. Um, that, that I think that's the best description I've ever heard of it is that like after a, supposedly after that first time, it's just like, there's a different tint to your glasses. Like you see, yeah. you see things in a way that you're think about things in a way that you haven't before. Who knows? Maybe when I'm like 60, I'll just go crazy. I tell my yeah, wife all the time. Uh, yeah. Aldous Huxley, he wrote a book called the doors of perception and that's where Jim Morrison got the idea for naming his band The Doors. And that's what it's all about is that it's that change of perspective. And, you know, it's like you, we live inside these little, you know, glass bowls and stuff. And then something happens and your bowl gets a little bit bigger. And then something, you know, like that happens and, you, and your bowl gets blown wide open. You're just like, oh, my gosh, I wasn't even in a bowl to begin with. Right. So where do I go from here? <laughs> Well, I told, uh, I told Kara, I was like, you know, when I turn like 80, I'm just going to do like all the drugs. I'm just gonna, if I live to be 80 and I want to smoke crack, like I've earned it. There's got to be safe versions by then. Uh, yeah, I guess we should also have a disclaimer that um, there's plenty of things out there that we haven't done. And have no passion to do. I'm like, bring the grandkids over. Just oh, like, have them come on over. We're not smoking drugs. We're not shooting drugs. We're not Bro, drugs. yeah. No, 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 no. I don't think anybody. I just, for me, I, I tell her all the time. I'm like, you know, if I've, other than my shitty diet, I've done some like pretty clean living for the most part. So like if I hit 80 and I'm still like doing okay, I think I'm just going to eat booze and cigarettes. four grams of mushroom <laughs> and go to Kroger. <laughs> just yeah. 80 years old. Man. What's going on? So no, but I, I appreciate you sharing as, as people that are in it, you know what I mean? Cause you know, I know it's, I, it's kind of, I think it's kind of like the same way, you know, for people who are in like quote unquote rock bands is like, you know, they just drinking a, a, I think people have that, like almost like that motley crew, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, they're drinking a fifth of night and stuff like that where, you know, 
I mean, Gaither can most, a lot of the guys that we played with didn't touch anything. And there's plenty of nights where we were playing bars where I was like, just sitting at the bar being like, can I have a cup of coffee, please? Cause this is like oh, yeah. my fifth bar that I've been in this week and I don't want to drink anything. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? That's the thing. I think with anything in life, like if you do too much of anything, then it's going to push back in a negative direction. So then that makes you kind of look at it and go, okay, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm doing this wrong. Um, and it just helps you kind of grow as a person, I think in general. So, you know, everything's got its good sides and its bad sides. And it's, you know, what, if it's negatively impacting your life, then I think you need to take a look at it and, uh, and try to change things for the better. Hopefully. I was say, I think it also is important to say that at shows and stuff that, you know, get seeing videos of people acting weird or dancing crazy or people posting, you know, funny tags on Twitter or Facebook and like, you know, tagging someone who's doing that a show, like, a lot of times until you've been there and like, you know, Dylan and Eric both said earlier, actually feel the subwoofers taking over your entire body and like shaking your entire being like you, the energy between people and the transfer energy at these show, at these shows, specifically electronic music. I've noticed more. I've got it a little bit at rock shows, but electronic shows, I don't know what it is. It's just like this pure spark. You just feel I'm getting goosebumps talking about it right now because it's just this, crazy energy and that's really what like makes why we went back to electric for seven years in a row you know it's like it is that that's a high in itself the energy you're actually picking up from other people right that's awesome. i went and saw uh, it's funny because i was again i was listening to you and joey talking earlier and i remember they played uh kaleido played at st andrews hall uh, it must have been a year ago or more now I don't, I don't remember but i went and saw him with josh dylan and they opened up for Seether and Seether is a huge band. They have a huge following and Kaleido is a big band. And I was looking around the room cause I was standing pretty far back from the stage at St. Andrews and everyone's just standing there like this, like just watching the band and they might be like singing along or, but they're like, just like standing. I just look at like hundreds of people. I'm just like, man, no one's even like really getting down and stuff. And, uh, and I, I kind of like bump into someone and he kind of like mean mugged me. And I'm like, dude, at the shows I go to, you like, everyone's just like dancing <laughs> and doing their own thing and not caring about what the person next to you. Yeah, there's doing. No They're doing the same thing. Like everyone's just kind of. Ex- like, ex- no, nah, man, this, themselves this is how you stand stuff. when you watch fucking see their bro. <laughs> yeah. just... I was like, dude, these people <laughs> love these guys and they're not even like getting yeah. down to me. It just didn't make sense to me. Like, Joey came on and I went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Good fan. <laughs> well yeah i mean i like i don't know i just uh it's 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 different to you know i don't know a lot of people that are in that scene you know what i mean i i had one experience i went with a, a buddy of mine across the street he was like hey you want to go down to like i think it was called did they call it tech fest when it was downtown it's, like back in the day or it's called demps detroit electronic music festival they've been calling it movement now i think since like maybe 2010 or 2011 yeah, for some reason, I remember people called it like it used tech. To be like, free. Yeah. yeah. Like tech it, well, it was when it was free. Um, but he was he was like, hey, man, me and my cousin are going to go down downtown. You want to go? And I was like, sure, dude. I'd, I'd love to, man. I haven't been. Like, I think it'd be fun. So he, we go pick up his cousin, and his cousin is just like out of his mind already. <laughs> And he's like, dude, before we go downtown, we, uh, we got to stop by the hospital. My wife just gave birth. I have to go see the baby. And I was <laughs> like, Oh shit. Okay. So we, we go and we get in the elevator of the hospital. I've you know never met his wife. <laughs> I've never met him. And I'm in the <laughs> elevator. We, we go up to the hospital and in the elevator, he pulls out a switchblade and he's just like all just, just flipping it back and forth. And I'm like, what the fuck is up with this dude? And then he gets into a fight with his wife who just gave birth in the hospital room because we were going downtown to a music festival and oh so my he, God. like you so fucking bitch. Bitch joke. dude yeah, that's, that's bad well yeah, and then crazy. he tried to rob somebody downtown for ecstasy like he was like can i buy some can i buy some can i buy some and he was like yeah i got you and he pulled the knife on the dude and the dude ran off and i was like bro it's the only time in my life i've ever been a cab i called a cab in downtown detroit and was like i need to go home because <laughs> i was like this is yeah get get out of there a bad situation yeah, I was like, this is, yeah, so I hope, I just hope that baby's okay. That, I think about that a lot. <laughs> I'm like, man, I hope that kid turned out okay. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say. That's definitely for sure. <laughs> I mean, now, now that kid is probably like 12 or 13 years old. So I'm wondering if like he's in an elevator somewhere, just like, yeah. what's up? Like flipping a switchblade, yeah, just like, like father, like son. Right? The apple never falls far. No, that's true. 
his wife was a nice lady though. I didn't understand the the circumstance, but that's funny. Well, I wanted to ask you guys this to kind of close us out, but um, one thing I really admire about you guys, and I, I see it in your posts, I see it in, I mean, I, like I said, other than I read, this is my first time kind of being face to face with you, but knowing uh, Eric and, and Dylan, as long as I have, like you guys are, are very much into a, like a positivity, a positive energy and kind of putting that out. And I mean, I've got firsthand experience that, you know, playing music with Eric over the years and things like that. But, you know, for anybody who's listening right now, who may be, you know, kind of struggling, because again, it's like a, it's an unsure time. You know what I mean? Like tomorrow something could be totally different and, and, you know, everybody's talking about like the second wave and all that stuff. So it feels like we're just kind of like living on pins and needles. And and one thing that I've been asking people have been coming on the show is, you know, what would your piece of advice be? Or is there something that you've been doing that has kind of helped you get through? I mean, is there anything you want to share as far as like, what's kind of helping you stay grounded right now? For me, it's, uh, I've really been utilizing the the changing of spring up here in Michigan. Um, in this time where we're kind of locked up and can't see our friends and all that, like I just last weekend put my garden in um, and got everything, you know, ready to go and really appreciated it. it. was the first nice weekend I've had off. So I was outside in the 80s, got some sun and really just kind of being able to appreciate and actually watch the leaves form and like the flowers come up and like planting a garden and reaping the rewards, being able to appreciate that more than just living in the hustle and bustle of doing stuff um, has kind of kept me sane. That's awesome. Yeah. What about you, Eric? Anything for you? Or are you just going crazy all, all the time? Yeah, <laughs> you, you know, like I've, I've been a pretty optimistic person for a majority of my life and I'm a pretty happy go lucky guy as these guys can attest and I'm sure you can too. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll be honest in saying that I've been pretty depressed these last couple months. And like I had mentioned earlier, like I've just felt uninspired for really the first time I think in my entire life. And that's been hard to, to work through, but I think me realizing it and kind of coming to, to that has been helping me push, push through. But probably my, my biggest thing is, 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 is having the greatest person in the world, uh, here with, by my side. I mean, I was lucky enough to get be able to marry my best friend and we've been side by side and literally I can't get her away from me most times but um she's just do- brought the- she walked in with Taco Bell hey we had Taco Bell for dinner tonight before I sat down with you guys oh, great minds sponsor the podcast but <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I-, I love her to death and she's really helped me get through this and and the same with these two guys that are here you know Reed and Dylan and I and, he- and even Allie like we we feel each other a lot you know feel each other Me- metaphorically I, I, right yeah right and i yeah. i tell you what like I, I i know when dylan's not feeling okay or i know when reed's not feeling okay and they know when i'm not feeling okay and i don't think i have that with really anyone else uh besides my wife that i that i really do that with and again like if i go even one day without hearing from either of these guys i know that either something's up or maybe they got busy reed he hadn't mentioned, but he's working in the food chain industry. And so he's been like literally working crazy 13 hour days, like nine days in a row. And then he might get two days off and he's got to work three days in a row. And he really goes full tilt. Um, but we're, we're there for each other. And I think that that's what's helped me through probably the most through all of this. Yeah, so man. Stay connected. I guess my, my, my thing is stay connected to those that you love because <laughs> it helps a whole lot. Well- and it's yeah. crazy too. Cause I mean, even, you know, when we were in the band together, you know what I mean? Like you get every, you get to, you get so used to being around everyone that it's almost like being in a relationship with, you know, three, like two, three, four different people. And you, you know, you're getting that energy. Like, you know, you and I may be in a good mood, but you know, Joey was in a bad mood and like, you could tell, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, I think, I think that's one of the things that is so I don't know. I will say, I think I am the most grateful for those relationships. You know what I mean? Cause I know like at the end of the day, I could, you know, if something was going on, I could call you, you know what I mean? I could call right. Joey, you know what I mean? And you guys obviously have that with each other, you know what I mean? Which is, is, you know, I, I, it makes me think about people out there who may not have just one of those people to be fortunate enough to have multiple, you know, that yeah. like people no, you can depend on. Blessed. We, 
we know that at the bottom of our hearts that, that we are truly blessed to have the friendships that we do. Um, and, and we're there for each other all the time. And, you know, absolutely, John, if you need anything from me always, I mean, I was so stoked when you texted me the other day asking for us to come on the podcast. I immediately texted these dudes uh, and my dog started and they were just as excited as I was one, probably just to like talk to someone because you don't get to talk to other people. We haven't actually seen each other, John, in like maybe three weeks. Two weeks, oh, that's three awesome! Weeks. Yeah, 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 definitely. Well, I'm glad I could facilitate that for you guys, and I'm glad to be a part of it. That that yeah. makes me feel good. Yeah, it helps with everything, and and maybe when someone out there is, if they're feeling, you know, all of this as, I mean, especially with everything that's going on in Minneapolis right now, just to add to everything, and um, hopefully, maybe when people hear this, they, it, it, it maybe just you know brightens up their day just a little bit to know that like we're all feeling it together. Yeah, it's uh it's i think i I think that's one of the things that i look forward to when when this is all over is that like if we can continue to kind of like talk because i think we've really seen that like a lot of people deal with the same things you know what i mean like the feelings of isolation the feeling of like needing needing that human connection and stuff like that like I've worked from home for the last three years. So when they were like, guess what? You're working from home. I was like, okay, not a big deal. You know what I mean? But <clears throat> then I was like, oh shit. Like I still like, I thought that I was like used to being like, eh, I don't need to see anybody. You know what I mean? Until I couldn't. And then I was like, man, like it would really be nice to like, right. you know, give my, my mother-in-law a hug or like, you know what I mean? Go to this show or, you know, do whatever. So I think it's really I, I, I'm hoping that we'll have an understanding for each other that we haven't had before. And that makes me feel optimistic. Uh, what about you, Dylan, anything that like, you know, that is getting you through or anything that you would suggest for anybody listening and keeping the sanity right now? I think what we, we just talked about is huge. Um, just kind of understanding that everyone's going through waves going up and down and feeling good and bad right now. And uh, while some of us may feel good in a moment, some of us may, be in a terrible moment at that particular time so just to have patience learning patience with each other hopefully hopefully the whole world is learning this right now um and i'd say like the things that are helping me is learning new stuff like trying to learn absolutely anything you can illustrator I, i've been learning adobe illustrator just always wanted to learn how to make a logo so literally been working on that um uh, that anything to occupy the mind like that um is going to help you out yeah. And I think too, I think that, I mean, I don't know. I wonder if that is because you guys have artistic minds, but well, yeah, I had Stephanie Gunther on the show. Um, she was uh, the singer for Edison Clio. She's now in a band called uh, desert sharks out of Brooklyn, but she said the same thing. She's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm taking guitar lessons. She was like, Fender is giving out a whole bunch of free lessons. You can just go on. So she's like, I'm taking bass and guitar lessons just because why not use the time to, to learn something? You know what I mean? And I'm actually right there with you. I've been trying to learn after effects, trying to <laughs> I've got the cloud. So I'm like, Oh, I want to make like a cooler logo for this show. Yeah. So trying I, to figure I, stuff I, out. Just, uh, just like after effects, I learned, or I'm learning or I started dabbling with blender, which is essentially a, you know, similar to after effects. Um, but it's a free program. And I, just like Dylan, I wanted to make some 3d logos. And if you go to our, uh, if you go to our socials right now, you'll see that there's the, the triangle logo that we use that's on Reed's shirt. Um, Dylan made the triangle logo. That's our icon. And then I made the banner up at the top. So whereas we, we used to kind of outsource some of that graphic art stuff to like our friends we're, we're like, screw it. We just want to figure out how to do it. Cause you know, we're, we're artistic in that sense. And we want to just try to bring it into fruition. Yeah. And that's why I've really enjoyed the podcast too. Is like, I did the, I did the, the opening theme. Like I was like, okay, I got to figure out how I'm going to record it. Now I can't have people in my house anymore. So now I got to figure out how I'm going to do it remotely. So it's like, it's been fun to like give yourself a task and be able to be like, okay, like I figure this out and I can move on to the next thing. Um, I want to ask you guys for anybody who's listening, they want to find you. I know you mentioned the socials, checking out the logo. What's the, uh, where can people uh, get the updates? Where can they find your stuff? Again, I know you're on uh, uh, Spotify, Apple Music. We're going to put everything in the show notes. Um, but, yep. you know, you guys are on Facebook, stuff like that. Where's the best place to find you? Well, we're always active on Twitter. That's probably our number one interaction with our, our friends and, uh, and fans. Um, but we have a Facebook page that we post things to. 
Uh, we have an Instagram that, that these guys run uh, all the time, every day, that are putting up content. Uh, like you would mentioned, we're, our, all of our music's available on iTunes, Spotify, Napster, Deezer. <laughs> uh, we, like Rita mentioned, we use SoundCloud more for things that we maybe don't financially own or that we rip and try to make the best of. So that, that, that's like more of the underground stuff. But, uh, but yeah, get at us on, on, on Twitter. Everything is just Tetronauts or Tetronauts music. What, do you, what, what were you going to say, Reed? It's all just backslash Tetronauts. I think. Yeah, I, I think we, we, we own Tetronauts, so we, we got it on everything. <laughs> cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll put all the links to all the socials in the show notes, too. And if you want to find them on Napster, just go to Ask Jeeves and then type in. Yeah, <laughs> first go to Ask Napster. Jeeves, type in Napster. Paper clip tool to help you. Yeah, find. Ask Clippy. Yeah. <laughs> oh god well i just uh i want to say thank you guys it's uh this is it's been absolutely awesome having you guys on again i'm i'm a, a huge fan of what you're doing and and the way that you're doing it i don't think there's i can't i mean and maybe it's just because i don't have my my finger on the pulse of of that scene in particular but i i can't think of a lot of artists out there that are doing it the way that you guys are doing it right now and i, I think anytime that there is something new or innovative and especially when it's good it's always you know worth celebrating to a high degree so i just wanted to thank you guys for coming on uh tetronauts mr eric gaither reed smith uh mr dylan tobin uh we're gonna wrap it up will you guys hang out for just a second afterward yeah absolutely john awesome thank Thank you guys we will see you next week thank you for being here 